What is going on guys? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live stream. Today we're on with Brandy, aka Be The Fountain. How the heck are you? I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> did my, did my, did the ad start playing on? Probably. Okay. My <laughs> bad, y'all. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. So what is going on guys? Happy Wednesday. Tonight we're going to talk about aquascaping, kind of different styles, methods, techniques, you know, tips, tricks, stuff you should do, shouldn't do, and kind of go through there. Now we've both recently aquascaped the tank, so we figure it's kind of nice and fresh. I know you recently did redid yours. Last I redid weekend. this one a month or two ago. So yeah, it should be good. <laughs> yep. My, um, I have, I have a penchant for rearranging, rearranging things in the house in general. Yeah. Like, I'm like, the couch shouldn't go here anymore. It should go here. <laughs> it drives my husband crazy. And when I started messing with the aquascape, he's like, of course, because it's been a year. Why Why wouldn't you change it? Yeah, I mean, the couch over there was so last week, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it can be fun, right? Like, sometimes it's almost as nice and to freshen up or mix it up. So it's good. Uh, Shroomy's Reef, think about habitat, providing space for a specific species and habitats. 100% agree with you. Um, I know one of the, the current trends in aquascaping is more like the NSA style, which is negative space aquascaping. So it's very minimalistic rock with lots of open space, which is, you know, great for free swimming fish, but you also got to take in consideration the habitat for fish, right? Um, so you need to have those little caves and different spots for your fish to sleep in. And that's one thing that's going to reduce fish aggression later on. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out why I have an echo. Oh, it might have been me. I just turned off the speakers with my headphones on. Do I still have an echo? I think you're good now. We'll find out in a minute. There's okay. like a 30 second delay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I, I think. I didn't think I thought about from the very beginning but I naturally just made caves and stuff because I thought they looked nice and cool and that the fish would enjoy having a place to hide um obviously that was quite a while back the first time I did an aquascape but um yeah so okay <laughs> I, I've always liked arches. So I've always done the kind of archy things on my tags. Yeah, so I was totally my speakers. So back to headphones it is. Um, so there's, there's two ways to think about it. You can have, if you have lots of coral and that grows in, all of that structure is also providing habitat, right? And that's kind of habitat beyond the rock scape. Or if you, but most people, they want their tank to look good from day one, right? So they do all the scape versus rock. I mean, one consideration for sure is to make sure that you leave room for coral growth. And that's the mistake I made in my early days. And I slowly left more and more coral space as time went on. Yeah. You concur? The, um, I, that, that's one of the things that I liked about the new aquascape that I just put in is I was able to fill it up as much as I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I can take stuff off as things fill in. Um, I have a giant arch going across the top, which I like arches too. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think it's kind of cool when it looks like the two points are like coming to me, like an mm -hmm. archipelago where, yeah, I don't know. And, um, magical underwater arch. No, they do. Look yeah. Good. They do. I, it, it's funny. Cause like, I think about <laughs> like all these aesthetics to <laughs> the, the reef, right. And my, my aquascape and, what I think my fish are going to enjoy swimming around, yeah. um, which is habitat, right? But it's not quite the same thought process around it. No, it, it's true. So the one cool thing is, so I think use the aqua rocher rock for your new scape, right? And that, that stuff's actually pretty funky. I know my one of my buddies, Matt, used to have it in his tank, but it's kind of like lock, interlocking in a way, so you can just pull out a shelf and add in a new one and that type of stuff. So you also have the peg system on that one, eh? So they have the, the, I told you earlier, there's 700 different SKUs to this. So there, there's like a ton of different That's things insane. you can do. Uh, <laughs> so they have like this, like, um, ball and arch system where you like, like you can put a ledge in, they have different shaped, like <laughs> sticks, I guess is what you would call it. The one that rocks. So I have, yeah, Branches. <laughs> different shaped rocks. Um, and so I got, I added a big arch that has the things where you can add in the, the 
ball and socket is kind of what it looks like. But I don't have any of those. It's just a plain arch. Mm -hmm. And then I have a box that comes in a kit that has a base that you stick these into. And, like, you just, like, build it out however you, like, however long you want. It's carbon fiber rods already built in it. And it's, like, freaking cool as all get out. That is pretty cool. Um, similar to Art Refrox. It is actually, it's a similar concept. Um, I don't think Art Refrox has like the little like ball and joint kind of thing that some of the Akarosha does, but it definitely has the pegs, which I have a couple of chances. Yeah, so one thing with these, I rated a bunch of stuff right before the stream. So same similar <laughs> thing where they have acrylic rods oh. and a chunk of the pieces and there's, you know, random holes in it and you can just kind of like lego them together basically and make funky little structures the, the it's cool so part cool. yeah the cool part is you can take it apart and change it and rearrange to different spots so that part's kind of fun you know different little toppers and different shapes so it's, it's similar in that concept and i think if you're not if it's your first time aquascaping or you don't want to get crazy in cement and do like super extreme it's a really easy way to kind of build crazy stuff without much effort what is that made out of do you know not a clue oh okay um yeah i don't know but it has that like kind of fake purpley coating on it to give it more the real reef look i know this is ceramic so it's really lightweight which is nice yeah um i know my aquascape um i left this piece in actually I use, mm-hmm. I had bought one of those carbon fiber rods that's like bright orange yeah. and I had did a, I did a really long arch and I realized after I put the arch together with like a lot of cement that mm-hmm. I needed to go back with a carbon fiber <laughs> rod and so then I had to like figure out how to snake it through and like drill it without like destroying the arch I had made mm-hmm. so um this was definitely a lot easier and less stressful yeah so this is this is true okay so th- this is like another little sidebar topic because so okay so the aqua roche is made of a ceramic right so that gives it very porous and light um the art reef rock i don't know what it is it feels more like a cement coating i don't know what the base is i don't know what it looks like now there's also other ones that i've used would work well too is the aqua forest rock which is crazy light it's like a pumice is stone. it yeah. i've never held it yeah, it's like Is that so, what you have in your tank behind you? Um it's mix of this and mix of our reef rocks. So okay. but it's like surprisingly light, which is really crazy. As we and can that, tell from the way you toss it around. Well, I don't know. It, it's hard to Maybe you're just show really it. strong. Maybe. <laughs> but anyways, that's pretty <laughs> And then the other one I've used is the Marco Rock, which this is a mined I think it's a limestone, I believe. I have Marco Rock too. So I believe that's a mined one. And th- this is what I've used in all my earlier tanks, and I've mixed it up on the later ones. But this stuff is reasonably good for interlocking and stacking and building stuff. But generally, I find you will want to, like, secure chunks of it. So. Yeah. I've also got, um, I got really lucky. <laughs> I got really lucky in my LFS a couple of years ago. I walked in right after they had taken down a tank that had been up since the 70s. Nice. So I have like all these chunks of real reef rock um, that, of course, are dried out now. So they're yeah. it's not super useful. But I did actually put them Once in my live. tank at one point, mm-hmm. and I had tons of pests from this, so that it was actually kind of a problem. Um, it's a but, trade off for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was a big trade off, um, mm-hmm. but definitely really cool. Like all you can see, like all the old like coral skeletons and. Um, I've got more over here, but they're kind of heavy. Yeah. So that's another good point slash question. If you are able to get live rock from a clean system, it's going to give you a ton of like wicked diversity to boost starting a new tank or add diversity to your tank. But again, it always comes with that risk of pests. So what's the difference between ocean live rock and from a system live rock? Like, cause you're not going to get the same thing, right? No. Um, it's hard to find ocean live rock these days cause most of them don't pull out of the ocean anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if they did start taking, you know, man-made live rock or mined rock and throw it in the ocean for a while, but you're going to have different bacteria cultures, right? Yeah. It's going to be more diverse in the ocean, but you're also 
could have more diverse pests in the ocean than in a tank. So that's always a bit of a trade-off. And, it, you know, is it worth it for the bacteria? I mean, very well could be. It'd, you'd almost want to take, like, ocean rock and then, like, quarantine it for a little bit make sure there's no, like, super nasty things on it and then move into a tank. But it'd be interesting. What's going on, Greg? What's going on, Ellery? So, yeah. Now... For the actual aquascaping, um, another one, I don't have any of it, but there's something like the Julian Spring stacks, which is like basically yeah. flat cut pieces where you just stack it up and make kind of more columnar type structures. Um, you got the ledge rock, which a lot of companies do. It's funny because I like a combination of all the rocks, to be honest. Like, I yeah. feel like the, the stacks by Julian is really nice as a base rock and mm-hmm. or at the top. Yeah. I like them for shelves for putting corals and stuff on. Mm -hmm. So like here, this is thicker, but that's kind of like a shelf-ish from Marco Rock. (laughs) Um, (laughs) This is one from Aqua Forest, like little ones. But not that you can see them, but I have big ones in there as well. So two two things. I do like using them on the top of stuff to give you lots of coral mounting space. Now, they're also awesome to throw on your sand bed because it gives that little bit of elevation to mount stuff like either zoas or micromusas or different things where you don't want it necessarily in the sand, but it pokes up that little bit. So you can still move it around. It kind of helps prevent them from being buried in sand. So I love that idea. Yeah. Um, now, the other good kind of consideration is with the base rocks. So if you're planning a new scape, um, picking ones that are flat on the bottom, like this Aqua Force one's super flat. I know some of the Marco ones, they'll cut it flat with like a saw, so it's super flash flat. But using those as the base of your aquascape, because you have a very solid foundation, then you can build up on top of it from there, and you don't have to worry about stuff being tippy and right, because you're really good start. So that's another big consideration. Yeah, actually, Shumi, I sent him a picture the other day of my firefish, had yeah. like was half buried underneath a rock that I thought was flat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, do you think he's dead or is he alive? How do you get under and, there? Um, yeah, and so I, I I grabbed my my tongs and I poked him just to be like, what are you? he was alive and he looked really angry and he had like the fish find a way to like dig underneath rocks even like the most flattest rocks and yeah. he immediately darted right back <laughs> under there whenever I walked away he was like what the heck yeah um, but yeah like if yeah, you take exactly. a lot of rocks like that right all it takes a little nook and you know that could be a little yeah. tiny fish hole. It doesn't yeah. take much. It's crazy. Yeah. Only it looked flatter than that. And he looked like he was dead and he yeah. was smushed in there. So, yeah, it, it's that habitat <laughs> thing is an important component. They they will find it. Yeah, they definitely will. So Ryan in the chat saying he likes the good old Marco rock and hammer method. So <laughs> if you are very creative, like that is another really cool way where you basically you just smash up a bunch of rocks. You get a bunch of tiny rocks and you re them together in crazy shapes. So that's definitely a good way to go. Yep, that's that's what I did with my last one and hmm. all the the glue. Um, I have a so you re, you redid yours, right? I did. What what did you do? Like, what did that process look like? Um, so I took out a ch- a big chunk of it from the main display tank and I moved it down to the sump, just so I didn't lose that bacteria. Mm-hmm. So it still was in the system. I didn't really have to worry about shocking it as much. And then I rebuilt and played within the top, and then I moved some of the bottom back up to the top, and it was a bit of a blend between the newer rock and the older rock after that. Mm-hmm. Did you already have corals in the tank? I had some, yeah. Yeah. How no, do you all... deal with those? Um, threw them on the sand. <laughs> okay. You, were and then... any of them mounted? Like, did you take them off? Like, how? I didn't really have anything that was like perma mounted on, so that made it fairly easy. Um, there's well that being said there's like rock flowers on rocks my sump still and stuff that i haven't moved up yet so definitely a bit of a blend but yeah for the most part nothing was overly encrusted so it wasn't too bad or you just rescape then work that chunk of rock into it super califragilistic expialidocious that's what you say to the coral (laughs) (laughs) yeah sounds catatricious um yeah i had quite a few of my encrusting coral that had I, i i i don't know how you get that off well, you can't really get the encrusting off unless you have a coral saw, in which case you could cut it and kind of like shave it off. Um, um, otherwise, break off the saw. branch and then re-glue it. Yeah, that's essentially what I did. And I, like there was a bunch of it left behind and my husband was freaking out. He's like, but all the all the coral. And I'm like, I was trying I tried to like pry it up and it just like crackled. And I was like, 
I don't think I can save it. If if it's glued on and crest, sometimes too, if you take like a flathead screwdriver, you can put it underneath and kind of pop it off, mm-hmm. which you don't always, you know, usually you'll lose some of the edges, but you usually get a chunk of it. And that yeah. works fairly well. I did. That that was a, right where it was glued on. I was able to mm-hmm. like get that off, but like twice that size had encrusted on. And I'm like, I don't know how to get this off. It's on there for good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it is tricky. Like I know. So another type of rock, one we haven't talked about yet, is Tonga branches. Oh, yeah. Which you that don't... was the word I was looking for earlier yeah. when I said the sticks. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. So <laughs> to- Tonga branches are really big, like decent sized branches and they're funky shapes. It is extremely dense, extremely heavy. So it's not cheap because usually it's sold by the pound, right? And I bought some once off a tank shutdown, which came with the Tonga. But so I resold the Tonga and kept all the coral off of it what i could i just like you know same thing with the saw like shave off what i can to get it i need to get a saw (laughs) they're 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 handy but um you can do really cool stuff with tonka at first i didn't care for it but over time it's growing on me i've never personally used a tank but the the one kind of nice thing is because you have this crisscross of branches it kind of creates natural separation for corals Mm -hmm. so there's less risk of coral warfare yet you can still put a ton on it so that's Uh one of the cool things i remember terrence from neptune had a ton of in his tank and one of his selling features like oh you need more space just poke another branch in somewhere random i was like that's a very (laughs) fair point yeah yeah so that that is a big advantage that one um but now if you look at some of the other ones now too same thing if you just poke in another you know, rod and build off of it. It's an easy way to mix stuff up. Yeah. Anyway, um, here's something else that I like to do. This was actually a experiment because I had a goby that liked to move sand like crazy. Yeah. And I tried to give him some natural pathways. So I did these barnacles and I used a Dremel to Dremel out um, one of the barnacles so that he could use these PVC Pipes and I had them underneath the sand everywhere cool. underneath the tank. He never used them, but my <laughs> Anthias and my um, chalk bass fish, like it's several of my other fish that I would not have expected would have used them, loved mm. them. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I love adding barnacles to the tank. I have not used barnacles in ages, but they're cool. You're making me want some again. Yeah, I've got some in, in there still that I have like down tucked underneath a little hole up I was thinking about adding this back in and taking off the PVC pipe yeah um one of the things whenever I got this mm-hmm. was it still had a bunch of stuff growing on it and it smelled so <laughs> bad like I I was not expecting that yeah any anything oceany once it gets to oxygen for too long gets funky yeah now if you were to reuse that, one thing I would say what could be cool is for the PVC, like put a bit of super glue on it and throw sand at it and cover it in sand and it'll blend it oh, in. Oh, that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, it'll blend that's, it in more. Yeah, that's actually really smart. Though I'm not going to add the pipes connecting like I had before. Yeah. So I don't know, but that is a good idea just to give the fish another place to hide. And they yeah. love these things. Like my my um basslets like the royal grandma all kinds of fish if they're small enough to fit in here like you'll see like just faces sticking out (laughs) yeah it's kind of fun hey random question are your basslets are they friendly are they punks um my chalk basset yeah they're 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 nice okay i don't have any currently um i've it's been a while since i've had them but they're they're pretty Mm -hmm. um and they basically just like sat around and like watched and when food would come out they would eat and then they'd sit around and watch everybody again this hideout for the most part Mm -hmm. i actually think they were having babies in the tank too i had a bunch of like random baby fish in the tank (laughs) in the sump and i couldn't ever figure it out and that was the only like pair that i had so at the time so i assumed that they were having babies and of course that's pretty cool so they were dying but that's still pretty cool though yeah it was really cool yep Sure means the old fashioned stack up against the back method. So that was that was definitely the old style where you throw as much rock as possible into the tank and it was generally off the back wall. Um I mean hey, it still works. It's not once it's covered in coral, honestly, most things don't matter because the coral turns into your scape. But until then you still want to look cool. I 
I'm a big fan of like overhangs and like weird. I like I like weird scapes, but I like it to look like semi natural, but lots of crazy caves everywhere. That's kind of what I tend to go for. I will say my new scape I'm really excited about with all these different branches. It's kind of like the Tonga branches, mm-hmm. but they it doesn't look very Tonga y. And you have a picture, don't you? I do. Let me find it. <laughs> and um, this is your like newest they, one that you sent me today, like right? Tangled up, huh? The one you sent me today? I think so. Was it close enough to see that? Uh, kind of. Is it in the middle there? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So you got the big crazy arch. You got a bunch of crazy. So is that like Tonga-ish in the middle with all like the crazy branches everywhere? Yeah. So it has like the centerpiece that um that you build it off of, and like some of the pieces I made like three and four pieces long, and some is only one. Nice. Motorcycle. Yeah. Sorry, windows open. It's getting toasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. You, is... Yeah. Okay. I can see it now. We, there yeah. is a delay. Um, so on the left hand side is my my old scape that I was talking about that I like I busted up a bunch of Marco rock yeah. and <laughs> super glued it all together. Um, and that side is so now the left hand side is the giant. Oh, OK. <laughs> I was just scrolling through all of them. Oh, I'm back to the original one now. Oh, OK. <laughs> You're right. watching the 30 second delayed stream. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. Um, on the left hand side, the um was I had built it so it like it curved down and around and there was like four different caves in there for the fish where like I couldn't see the fish at all if they wanted to be like totally away from humans, which I regret doing because sometimes I'm like, I haven't seen a fish in a while and it's just hiding out back there. Um yeah. and then I super glued all these tiny pieces together. And that big long arch, and then I was like, "This is not going to stay." So I had to go back with a carbon fiber rod through mm-hmm. the bottom and try and like drill after I had used all that mortar and super glue, hoping that <laughs> it didn't fall apart. It didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting any moment that it was going to fall apart. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> I remember one of the funny things when I was originally doing it was trying to cal- counterbalance stuff because you want to do these crazy arches and things, but it's, you know, it's heavy on one side. So you got to yeah. be strategic in your placement of rocks to counterbalance it. And even sometimes, you know, maybe you just have a little tiny rock to hold it or just that one little angle to hold it from falling over. Yeah. My, my small skate that I did in my 15 gallon water box was, mm-hmm like had a giant overhang and I had to take a one rock on the back that was like this triangle rock and sit it on the, it did absolutely nothing except for kept it from tipping forward. Yeah. I'm like, this, cool. this is really close. Like I'm cutting <laughs> it close here. Um, and then that, that middle section is like all the, the middle section and the right hand section on that picture was all the, the new aqua roche rocks. Yeah. And so it's like a giant like arch and, has all these little crevices to stick coral or ledges or whatever you want to do. Thank you, Bruno. That's awesome. Bart. Thanks, Bruno. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's pretty oh. cool. One one thing that tried on the new Bruno, thank you. Um, on this one that I haven't tried before is actually there's like one section of rock where it's not even touching the sand. There's little acrylic legs on it, so it's oh, actually floating cool. above it. Which I don't know if I have a photo, so I'm just gonna snap one. Okay. I feel like someone mentioned doing that with PVC pipe, and I was like, eh. Yeah. But the acrylic rod sounds. Uh, is it gonna show up? Focus. Yeah. So if that shows up, there the one in the middle is completely suspended. Oh, that is cool. Show it. Let's see if I zoom in a bit. So yeah, you can kind of see if you look underneath the little tiny acrylic. Oh. Yeah, sorry. The little little tiny acrylic leg underneath. So it's actually floating oh, the whole rock so structure cool. above, which is kind of cool. I Did see the fish sideways those? underneath. There's there's little tubes inside with the acrylic rods underneath. It was part of Did the... you make it or is it part of yeah. that type of rock? No, that was part of the art reef rock one that Okay, so so I got a bunch of custom built scape, but then a couple of the core pieces were got cracked in shipping cuz DHL or whoever it was was a little rough on them. Yeah. So I couldn't hundred percent do it. So I just kind of wung it completely built my own and just like went crazy with the random pieces and then ended up with this that probably doesn't show up right now. But yeah, so 
it worked out really well. But yeah, it was kind of funky. I've never truly like floated them like that before, which that was kind of a neat effect. Yeah, that is really awesome. That's something yeah. I didn't know you could do. Yeah, see, Let's get all kinds of creative. I'm learning. Now, there's one tank that I see pictures of once in a while where he siliconed his rock to the back glass. Now, it's like a little nano one. And it's mainly full yeah. of scullies, I think. But so the whole thing's just kind of floating above, which is kind of a funky effect as well. Hey, y'all. Yeah, yeah I, that like completely floating. I think there's actually a company now that makes an acrylic piece that like comes off the back and makes a ledge and you put the coral or put the rock on it and like around it. Yeah. So you can't see the acrylic. And it's like, I think that is such an awesome look. Super cool look. Yeah. And it so gives the fish so much room to swim. Yeah. So there, there, here is. That's the one I was thinking of where he glued it to the back wall, but it turned out pretty cool. Like it's, it's a neat effect not having anything directly on the sand bed. Yeah, I love that. There's also this one that is one massive center rock and they've got mm -hmm. two long pieces and it's like got a bunch of like green acros and stuff on it that yeah. I feel like it, I, I see people share all the time. That's really beautiful. Yeah, I don't know, I, the floaty look is super cool. Like the only aesthetically i think it looks wicked the the only one thing i'd say is you don't have as much fish habitat so you couldn't put as many fish in it um well that now, looks like a lot of fish yeah, that, habitat. that one yeah sorry that, that one does yeah yeah that one's massive though so that one definitely <laughs> has a good chunk but but you also look you know you see a yellow tang and a couple little fish a bunch of small fish like uh there's a powder blue too but it is a consideration that you need to make is making sure if you plan on heavily stocking your tank that you also have a lot of habitat spaces. And habitat basically translate to little caves and nooks and crannies. And, like, you know, the second you turn out the lights in your tank, all your fish disappear somewhere, right? <laughs> like, if you instantly turn off your lights, boom, they're all gone. And within, like, 10 seconds, they're all hidden. Yeah. And they all have little nooks and crannies everywhere. And it's it's important because if they don't all have their nooks and crannies, it's going to lead to aggression and them fighting over the good caves and all that jazz. So that's why it's important to have a, a lot that are very diverse. <laughs> Bruno Mars, something <laughs> cold <in> here. <laughs> like everybody looks forward to seeing him do super chats now. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's... Yeah, I think the H NSA is the one that I've seen that lately. Habitat NSA, because I think the original NSA was was lacking habitat or fish homes, right? It was just like a skinny bonsai tree. Where now it's trying to make actual more little homes for everybody, which is important for sure. Yeah, I think the NSAs I've done, I've done two NSAs and I've done two boulder stacks. Yeah. Um, and the two NSAs I've done was really building caves. Mm hmm. Like, so instead of having, like, this giant boulder, right, like, it was, like, the same outline, but the space in the center was empty. So that was kind of how I've built my NSAs. It just gave less rock, more area. That's fair. Here is, there is one of the photos. This is one of my earlier ones for the current peninsula. I changed the scape, like, 200 times. But um, <laughs> Lily was just trying to, like, scape it up so it starts higher on one end and kind of, like, tears down to the other. Like, this is probably, like, halfway through my revisions. But I literally, there's much little caves and different flowy things. It's hard to tell. But I, I literally changed it every day for, like, three weeks straight. So, like, every day I'd walk out and change a few more pieces and go in and change a few more pieces. Like, that that's the nice thing about starting your scape before you have the tank is you can just go crazy with it. It, it's funny for because for me, so this Red Sea that I got was, I got really lucky. It was in the store mm -hmm. and I had been looking for like six, eight months and I couldn't decide which company I wanted. And my husband was like, Brandy, we are picking a tank. This one's here. We're buying this one. So I was like, okay, we're buying this one. <laughs> um, and so they were able to deliver it like a week and a half later. So I had like a week and a half to figure out what I was going to do in that space. Um, but I had been doing a ton of research and like I had, I can't tell you how many pictures I'd printed off of people's aquascapes mm -hmm. that I liked that I wanted to try and mimic. And so in my head, I knew exactly what I wanted by the time 
I got to the rock. So I did it in a day. Nice. Like I, I just went and like banged it out and it, it looked so good. That's awesome. Well, this one I did in like an hour or two. Like this is probably my quickest, one of my quickest ones ever. The other ones I spent like agonizing ages and ages over it, tweaking it. Then this is kind of a, a top down. I snapped earlier this one. So one in my earlier tanks, one of the things that I did is I made it look sweet from the side, but then a lot of it came to like more points on the top and certain things, but it didn't have enough coral space. Mm. And as I became more addicted in the hobby, you want more coral. And that was one of the biggest things. So now whenever I aquascape, I try and make it look cool from the side, but I also look top down and make sure everything's has kind of tiers, you know, and like you might start higher, but then either you tear out forward or the front and you yeah. have all those different levels and you got to look where the light's going to cast. Cause that's going to be where your coral space is at the end of the day. And I'm sure most of you guys are addicted to the coral as well. So I don't think I've ever, which is kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever done a top down of my current tank. What? I know. Like, <laughs> I've I've done like certain things from the top down, but not like an overall like full tank picture like that. I should, should. do that. I this was just I just snapped a few today when I was just trying to like figure out what to use for the thumbnail. <laughs> but um, I, I love top downs. Like it, they just looks so good. Which blows my mind that I haven't taken any. You're slacking. <laughs> yeah, well, I have that giant lid now, right? Mm -hmm. And my husband was actually asking if we should just take the lid off because I tend to mess with the tank more i'm like i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but like if a coral is flipped over like it's not a problem if there's no lid on i'm like if we've i've lost too many fish at the beginning of that tank before without a lid yep so i think that's the reason why i haven't is because it's hard to take a picture with the lid on well, let's take it off i know but put it's it back. heavy and awkward and yeah I guess. i've got an excuse for everything <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. Okay. So j just for fun, because I just found this one. So th this was my, the water box, my original scape ish. It's probably changed. It's probably like 80% that. And then you spend all this time making your rock look good. And then you cover it in coral. And over time, you can barely even see your aquascape anymore. So when you're scaping, I think it is important to think of the future and how you want it to look eventually and kind of keep that in mind. Now, my original scapes, I had rock that was, you know, 70, 80% of the way of the tank. Now, this time I made sure it wasn't more than about 50% of the tanks. Then you're leaving space or anything to grow upwards and fill in that space over time. And that's another big consideration that I know a lot of people, or at least I didn't at first. I went everything way up high to the top, fill that space, right? And then you're limiting yourself down the road. Your tank's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> What everybody aspires to. And I spent weeks on that aquascape. <laughs> but yeah, it's just funny because now you look at it and you're like, what aquascape? There's rock in there? Because it's just like, <laughs> it's all hiding now, right? Yeah. But, well, you, it was a good foundation. Yeah. But it, there's tons of caves and little nooks and crannies. And now I've been pulling stuff out of the tank, which seems weird because like I added all this coral. And now I'm actually like skimming some out to make more open space. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you see my Monday video, but like there was a big Duncan that was hiding in the middle of like I one of these rock that, structures, yeah. which you never saw it. And there was also that pink Ani in the middle. I'm like, you never see it. Like, why is it even in here? Have so you now, moved it yet? Yeah. So the okay. the one Duncan's right up there and then the pink Ani is up in the other oh, awesome. top corner. So I pulled those two out today. And I'm, I'm just going to try and like make more sand space. And then plus it helps me fill this tank up more. So it's a bit yeah. of a trade off. That's awesome. How long has that other tank been up? two and a bit and a half two, two point something gears i don't really know and you've really filled it up in that time i have to go through i literally can only look at old youtube videos and look at like the date i posted it to figure out my <laughs> timeline i have no idea otherwise it's terrible but well it's funny because i start i started with a 32 gallon bio cube right that's your first I, tank yeah, yeah yeah and um all my corals grew into each other and were fighting. So I had to switch to a six. I, my 60 gallon cube was like three months later because all my corals were fighting and it like gave me PTSD because even that tank, like mm -hmm. it didn't take long for things to start killing each other. And now I'm like, yep. I'm so scared to buy coral. Cause I'm like, where am I going to put it? Like, what about if they start fighting? And I have so much space in this tank now. Yeah. And, and I'm sure after a little while, I won't feel that way anymore, but it, it makes me so nervous that they're going to fight and kill each other. 
Yeah, I don't like it either for the most part. Um, <laughs> but like, even now, like, I posted a photo on Instagram today and I was jokingly saying it was like drafted tort something or other. And, um, but it was literally. With the yellow tip? Yeah, because it was a forest fire digi. And it was being overgrown by, I think it's Miyagi tort. One of the torts. But so I like was kind of joking <laughs> around. I was like, oh yeah, this is. I was like, yeah, this is the new whatever grafted, whatever the heck I called it. Uh, I won't scroll up. But um, yeah, so like that is, you know, coral warfare. And it, it amazes me that that little tiny tip is still growing, even though it's growing up around it. It's like it yeah. just keeps retreating. But that's like my most colorful tip of Digi. Like all the rest <laughs> of them don't have that like bright green tip. I'm like, of course, the one tip that's on there is. But yeah. So Drag I mean. That's a good point. Yeah, it's so pretty. I can see the picture now because of the delay. Yeah. Um, the He wishes his corals were closer to the surface for better pictures. I actually, my big arch that I added that's closer to the surface, I actually am planning on putting clams on it. One, because they Ooh. like the light so much. And two, because yeah. it'll be so much easier to take pictures of them. <laughs> so you just get an underwater camera. I, a lot of the times I'll just dunk this in the water and take a photo and then you don't have to worry about it. I do have this. Yeah. Which is Go, water. GoPros place. don't do as well for macro, like not macro, but like close up shots. Like uh, if you're t too close, it doesn't play quite as nicely. Uh, well, I've never tried it. So it's yeah. it's the new one, though. I should try it. Just to You see. should try it. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of an underwater camera, though. <laughs> I'll add uh, that to the list. <laughs> you, you were just talking about at the beginning of the stream, trying to see what the fishies see and go through it. And so I've, I've actually been thinking about this for like months now. One day I'm going to do it, but put a camera in and go through all the little crevices and like the fish view. That'd and be so over. cool. I have um, a 360 camera that I want to do that with. So I'm going to do it soon. I've been thinking about it for like six months. I don't know. How why big is that camera? That big. All right. So small enough where you could definitely do that then. Yeah. It's about the length of my cell phone, but not as wide, roughly. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that so would be awesome. I think it'll be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to that. It's do that, to -do, do that tonight. <laughs> All right. Um, what, what kind of camera is this? This is an Olympus TG camera. Um, these things are like wicked. This is a TG4. I bought it used for like a hundred bucks or hundred fifty bucks or something. But uh, this thing takes a It's cheaper than a macro lens. It takes amazing photos. So definitely find one of those. They're they're awesome reefing cameras. And they're waterproof, so you don't have to worry about reflections. You know, if you're motivated, just dunk it underwater and no reflections to deal with. Get a good photo. That's really smart. Yeah. And I actually some... wondered, a lot of the pictures that I look at, I'm like, how do they not have reflections? Because I feel like you can see me in every single picture. Or, or yeah, but, <laughs> or you put it right up against the glass, right? Ah. Because then you don't have space for reflection. Some some lessons learned outside yeah. of aquascaping. <laughs> yeah, or or if the light's hitting the lens, sometimes it'll affect it. So if you block it, if you are holding it back, you know, sometimes do something to block the light, that can help. Oh. We'll have to do a re-photography stream. Yeah, live stream I, one day I just gave up on trying to, I'm like, you're going to see me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Greg, Greg's going to put his hands in the tank because black people wear lotion. <laughs> you know, if I have moisturizer or sanitizer, I don't put my hand in the tank either. <laughs> so well like after yeah. i've done my makeup and like my whole facial regimen like i'm always scared or like touching my hair when there's hairspray in it like i'm like should i go wash my hands again <laughs> like it yeah i don't i don't like using putting my hands in the tank either yeah the way Chloe's complains like hands are so dry i'm like i know i gotta work on the tank <laughs> oh my god my hands are like, that's why i stopped getting my nails done was because <laughs> it, aquascaping yeah <sighs> And super glue and just salt in general. And my nails always used to look so pretty. <laughs> so, yeah, before you're a reefer. And now, yeah. <laughs> so another thing with aquascaping, your hands will get super rough after aquascaping. Playing with rocks, which I like to call Big Kid Lego, is definitely rough on the hands. I mean, it's it's almost like those things that you use to, for calluses, right? Like a puma stone? Yeah. Like... I mean, yeah. if you rub them long enough, maybe it will go rough and smooth again. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Yeah, I think it's just like micro cuts that it causes and it just causes it to like, like your skin to get rough or like a Velcro. Yeah. 
Um, does the Olympus handle blue light? It sure does. Um, actually, one of the best thing is, is the white balance is fully adjustable. So. I want to link to this camera. I shall. Boom. See? You can white balance it. And then the other cool thing is you could take um, a photo of something that is white under the blues and it will auto do the white balance. That's like the best feature of the camera. Hands down. That's awesome. Yep. So it's super cool. Um, anything else about aquascaping? Um, oh, I know. I know something. Yes. When I moved stuff, because I think we, we used a slightly different method of re-aquascaping, because it sounded like you put yours in your sump, right? Yeah. So I took a big Tupperware and <laughs> cleaned it out real well, and that's where I put my rock. Mm -hmm. um, and was able to switch out the rock and pull that out, put the new rock in and then make sure I had all the coral and all the snails and everything else off. Cause they were falling off into the top of where like you could yeah. hear them. Thunk, 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 thunk. Thunk. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. If you're reusing your rock back into the skate, um, you do not want to let the bacteria on it die. So you want to keep it wet. Um, like you said, like a big Rubbermaid containers or Home Depot sells these big bins with like, like a yellow or a red lid. And they're like 12 or 15 bucks and mm -hmm. they're massive tanks like they're like a 40 or 50 gallon tank equivalent those things are awesome for temporary tanks like i've bought tank shutdowns and just filled a trunk full of those things to like transport stuff super cheap cheap tank insta tank yeah um mm -hmm. i mean i definitely could have filled it i did not fill it with water but i definitely could have without a problem and it was probably a 40 gallon tupperware which yeah. i thought i was very genius to come up with this idea um, I'm going to patent it. This I'm the first person to have ever done this. You are, are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. uh, exactly. So, hey, I when I was upgrading my tank and doing stuff, like I use those as temporary tanks. Like I had fish living in those for a week or two. You know. Oh. In a pinch, like they're awesome. It's basically a tank, right? So you're telling so. me I wasn't the first person to come up with yes, this? Yes, yes, you were the first. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I will use that idea in the future. Thank you, Randy. You're very kind. So, sometimes I come up with a good idea. Right, um, right. Independent of other people who have already come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coolers are a really good idea, too. Mm -hmm. Then they're nice and insulated. I had a buddy they're probably that, more expensive, right? Well, I had a buddy that moved to a different province, like equivalent to a different state for you guys. But um, he had, I think he bought like a, or use like an old deep free freezer, put all those fish and everything in there because it's basically a massive cooler, and use that to as he's moving, you know, throw in the back of the U-Haul truck a big deep freeze full of all those fish and coral. And... That's awesome. Aren't... Yep. My di deep freeze cooler is covered in metal. That would make me nervous. That oh, I yeah. wonder what his was. Vintage Must have been was. plastic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant though. Mm -hmm. I almost like that would make a nice size tank no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not aesthetically the prettiest tank in the world, but it'll work. Um, in the chat, Aquarium Partner is not sure bacteria will die if outside of the water for a few hours. Basically, don't want it to dry out. Um, keeping it submerged is obviously best, but if not, I mean, you could just splash it with water or spray bottle it or something, but you just want to make sure it stays wet. That's, that, I, that's the most important thing. I have a story about yes. that. I Tell had me more. This, oh God. I had this rock, this top piece. Nice rock. Um, was um, sitting out in my garage for months and months and months and months and months and was super, mm -hmm. super dry. And whenever I put it in my tank, a giant bristle worm crawled out of it. <laughs> Crazy. So I do think that there is probably... Like the, like you know that surface area. If if yeah. if critters can get in there, bacteria can grow on that. So I, I'm there had to have been. It actually makes me nervous picking it up. Cause I'm always scared <laughs> of the bristle worm's going to crawl out again. I'm sure it's not in there anymore. But yeah. um, he, there had to been like a the inside had to be wet, right, or more yeah. like, and so there has to be bacteria that still survives. Um, depending on how dried out it gets, right? It yeah. was like some will obviously die off, right? Yeah. But you're also gonna have some that lives. 
great bearded reefer sending some love from boston great stream devin and brandy thank you so yeah. much thank you uh keep it damp with wet cotton towel if it's going to be prolonged boo oh that's a smart idea yeah i think that's how they ship it is like wet newspaper and stuff i was about to say didn't they do that with the news they used to ship zoas like that didn't they with just mm -hmm. wet newspaper on the zoas yep I mean, they have a slime coat, right? So, I mean, just as long as they don't dry, dry out. Like, sitting in the hot sun is probably no bueno, but if it's in a cool garage, it might survive for a while. Yeah, I mean, it was probably sitting in my garage for, like, eight or nine months, and when that bristle that worm crawled out of there. I'm impressed, actually, that he survived And he was that big, long. like, massive, and I was just like... <laughs> was like He's a survivor. I'm like, how did you even fit in there? Like, What'd you do with him? Um... Or did I you like die or him. you're like no i left him um i had an arrow crab so i'm not sure if the arrow crab ever ate him but mm. i i only saw him for a few months and then i never saw him again though he may have found a the inside of something and was like i'm just gonna chill here in like six years and some other rock he'd be like doo -doo -doo. remember me <laughs> yeah i know right like mm -hmm. yeah and he he was probably a foot and a half long like he was a big oh wow that is big yeah huh. so. they also what they used to ship sps like that back in the day in newspaper that's crazy interesting did they live that's insane i wouldn't never trust an acro newspaper zoo as i could see or like maybe a mushroom but acro whew. Well, make, it edge. makes me wonder if they realized that that wasn't the best shipping method, that <laughs> they added water and there was a higher survival rate. And that leads to why not as many people are successful as actors back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. We Poss might have possibly. solved it. Allegedly so. Uh, that's <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Um, doo -doo. I, I'm still impressed that I lived that long. Now, I had a buddy that bought... A bunch of rock off somebody else and i don't know if it was transported wet to his tank or not but i remember he brought it home put it in his tank and the next day he had a hippo tank <laughs> so it wedged itself in the rock hitched a ride with all the rock that he bought and went to his new tank oh my so god he's like what crazy. the yeah so it, it is absolutely amazing what can actually make it we shipped a lot of sps without water depends on the trip wow i didn't even think of that i would honestly wouldn't trust it like I wouldn't think it's doable, but if it actually survives, it's fairly impressive. Like a lot of the corals do have a slime coat on it, so I guess that's probably how they're surviving. But that's super crazy. Dang. I have no ability to speak at this time period because I was not reefing. <laughs> oh yeah. You used to take ah, coral background magnet really? in the thermos. Yeah, I thought about trying the thermos thing on like an airplane because you throw in your but luggage. You said or something. with wet paper. Crazy. Like, Dang. are our corals not as hardy as they used to be, or we baby like, them more did now? Did they survive? Like, were they not surviving when people did that? Or <laughs> I don't know. Well, they must have. If people kept doing it. That's so crazy. Yeah, I was out of my tank. Moved from North Florida to South Florida. I was out of my tank twenty four hours. Fish and coral in a cooler with twelve volt. Yeah, a little pump moving the water. If it's in water with water move, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, I know a stream or two ago i know we were talking about like those nano tanks and i thought it'd be cool just for like if you're driving to a show just throw one in your car to like hold all your loot for you like it'd be kind of fun or a little hotel room tank for your frags yeah a lot of people are doing that now i think it's a great idea if i didn't rely on airplanes to get to shows i would be all over that yeah we <laughs> um <laughs> here's my my companion what do they call that my when you have like an animal that oh my emotional support coral yeah my... <laughs> oh, i need to carry this tank and i need to have this pump continue running oh. <laughs> gets me through those first days <laughs> um we're we're doing one gallon elos tanks um Are you? yeah ryan and shumi and francois i'm assuming as aquarium partners and yeah a few other people Tommy from Worldwide Corals, we're doing these one little one gallon tanks that we're going to. I don't it's know how the heck I'm going to aquascape that yet, but it's it's going to look freaking cool. You've come to the right stream for ideas. I know. <laughs> how should I aquascape a one gallon tank? Well, you either. <laughs> what are the dimensions? Well, either way, you get I like. I think it's a cube. I don't know what the cube? dimensions are. What What's the dimensions? Probably like. Francois or Ryan. One gallon cube. I'm just going to Google it. 
get rid of idea. <laughs> One gallon. Like it has cube. to be the size of a milk jug, right? Yeah, roughly. I'm gonna guess seven or eight inches cubed is my guess. Uh, six point two nine cubed, roughly. So. Either you get like one really cool piece of rock already pre-done from somebody or you just, you know, or I'd take a bunch of the little rocks and just glue them together and make out something crazy for my own. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking about um, doing clams in it. That'd be cool. Yeah, because I'm obsessed with clams, but I have to try and get a hold of John so I can get some clams to put in it. And he's been so busy lately. Six and ah, a yes. half by six and a half by six and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's so tiny. It's kind of cute, though. Uh, it's going to be so cute. And can you imagine Ooh. just... <laughs> <laughs> can you mm. imagine just, like, clams on it? That'd be pretty cool. Six inches of nothing but clams. Maybe I'll just, like, have the bottom just be clams. I feel like you're going to have to feed that a lot, though. To, like, keep uh -huh. the clams... I feel like you're going to have to feed those clams a lot. Because they'll be smaller clams. It's just a little drip of Fido in there. Yeah. Like, well, it's interesting because I know this isn't a clam stream, <laughs> but John, who grows like all the clams, doesn't really say you should feed them a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So, which is interesting because pretty much everybody else says to feed them, but he grows like thousands and he's like, yeah, don't worry about feeding them. So, GNC Pixie Light. Yep. It's coming with the light. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. I have not seen this yet. Send me a photo of this later because I'm curious. Have you, um, let's see. I'll send you a picture right now. Perfect. Or I'll just hold it up to the screen. That works too. Um, GNC Nano Pixie. Huh. Crazy. It's so, okay. This is interesting. I've I always thought doing a tiny tank again, but at the same time I went tiny and I keep going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because I want more coral space. But the tiny ones have their own weird little appeal to them, which is kind of fun. Okay, nice. That's it. I'm trying to do the trick you said. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll> just... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, nice. So it's basically a little six and a half inch cube. Yeah. Nice. Got a little reflate with it. Yeah, that's the GNC light. Yeah, nice. So all you do is basically so, add a small power head and you're done. Yeah. Gold yeah. Slinger. Holy Gold smokes. Slinger. Thank you. <laughs> you're always amazing. Always Thank so you very nice. much. Thank you very much. Much, um, much appreciated. Yeah, some small rocks and clams. It'll be it's gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait. It's gonna be exciting. Thank you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so spoiled. Thank you, Gold Slinger. <laughs> um so it's decided you're doing a clamscape. Yeah. Well, assuming I can get clams, right? Like that that's my plan, like Okay, new new plan. If you do like a weird little bonsai type of structure, but get little rocks that, or clams like being on the rock and have like them almost like little flowers coming off of the Oh, that's skate. cute. That could be kinda cool. I wonder if I could like that that's already too big, but like yeah, like a clam here as a flower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bruno bars G6 is around the corner. I've heard rumors of these. Heard rumors are coming out. Yeah, I saw dun, someone dun, dun. like screenshot something. Yeah. We'll find out soon. I'm curious to see what changes. But <laughs> there you go, Bruno. <laughs> oh, thanks, Bruno. Thanks, Bill Slinger. <laughs> He's like, I made my appearance. You're yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Um, what else about aquascaping? Um, um, yeah, okay, sorry. This will have sold my head. I, I think it would be cool to do, like, some, like, crazy, like, structure thing, but have the clams elevated a little bit, like, ones that, like, sitting on the rock and have little like, pedestals as part of your aquascape. So it's like a clam tree. Like, that just seems something crazy. Yeah, that I don't think I've seen. that does sound really cool. Mm hmm I have to figure that out. Because I don't have, um... Oh, Reef Builders post posted it? Yep, just found it. Uh, oh. <laughs> when was it posted? Uh, 17 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, that's why we didn't know it. I know. G5 and G6 announced noticeable tweaking of overall spectrum ability to use their lights to be more deeper blue in both models. So the blue is going to be more blue. The pros can now be closer to the blues is what I'm reading so far. 
uh, closer to near UV with the spectrum. So we'll get some more color pop happening. 405 and 415. That's 395. Uh, scroll down the article. Oh, and, oh, and a new 395 LED. So the, the pros lose 30% of the cool whites and gain a touch more of the warm whites. Interesting. Hmm. I'll have to I dig have, into these later. Yeah, I have yep. Pro Gen 5s. Um, and I've been talking about Me adding too. in some <laughs> Pro XR15, not Pro, some blues, some XR15 yep, yep. blues. So we shall see. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, question. Now, are you on the Pro side or the Blue side normally? <sighs> So my water box, I had a blue, and I loved that blue. Yeah. Um, and but my that tank was not in the middle of my living room. <laughs> Fair. So whenever I put my tank in the middle of the living room, I went with the pros mm -hmm. because I wanted the ability to um, to not have a brilliant blue light throughout my entire house. That's fair. But it's too white. I'd like it to be bluer. Um, so... well, it sounds like you got the answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it sounds nice. like that pro is going to be re a really nice color. Um, but so, yeah, that's why I've been thinking about adding the 15s blue so that way I can have a bluer spectrum. Yeah. But I don't have to have the intensity quite as high so that way it's not so brilliant blue. Ah, interesting. And dig into this more later. Sounds fun. Yep. Okay, so I'd rather buy a sky over in your rear. So I'm not gonna say anything yet. Um, I actually a buddy bought a sky and I borrowed it and played with it for a week. So I so I have played with the sky. And then I gave it back, but I did film a bunch on it. I just haven't edited or done anything with it yet. So on my to do list. But I did play with this guy for a week, just because I've never seen one before. So he's like, hey, do you want to borrow it before I set it up? I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> I, I saw it at um, Rufa Palooza. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it better when they add the Kessel to it. I, it's okay by itself, but it's not... It's just a little bit dull to me. It's a slightly yeah. dull color in the light. Mm -hmm. Yep. So... Yeah, wider lenses equals less power spread. Okay, so that that is a consideration. Now, with every generation of Radeons, the they've given you more and more and more spread. So you get less power intensity down deep, but it, and the trade-off is you get more even power everywhere. So you're getting more of an even blanket rather than the cone of power, which the old LEDs had. So that's one thing I've noticed over time. Um. Uh, I also have the 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 medium sized GNC light. Yeah, which is really cool, um, and it's got. I, I haven't think, seen those. Oh, tell, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, I, it's really cool. I I could go downstairs and run and get it, but that's probably for a different stream. Yeah, but um, it's got like we'll do a lighting stream in the near future. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds like we got well, new stuff to talk about. Especially with the G six coming out, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. and it's it's, I think. 606 no 330 leds and it's just it is incredible and like i i've heard that like the par on it near the top is like 900 yeah not even like fully ramped up like 900 with like like 400 at the bottom i'm like dang like so your fans will be happy <laughs> yeah right so yeah that little gnc light i'm excited to see um what the the small version what kind of part it puts out. You should put the big one on your tiny tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than the, the whole gallon altogether. That'd be yeah. hilarious. <sighs> I, I think it'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would grow clams really nicely. The clams would be like, I'm in Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? <laughs> okay. Um, so on aquascaping with your lighting... <laughs> Um, oh, that's to, a good to, point. Like to to rope to ro rope it back a little bit, um, if possible, it is useful to hold. I mean, it doesn't have to be aquarium light, but it is useful to hold a light up above the aquascape 
and get an idea how the cat light falls, how your shadows are. Now, if you're aquascaping in your tank, it's obviously a lot easier. If you're doing it outside of your tank, it's a bit trickier. But it kind of gives you an idea of where all the light falls and where corals are going to be happy. And it gives you kind of a way to play with it from there. So that's another kind of pro tip if you have the ability to well scaping. Yeah, I posted mine earlier on Instagram. And um, Cuban Reaper, that was one of the things he said was my arch, was that underneath it is going to be shading all the coral. I'm like, yeah, it will. <laughs> so but knowing to have uh, like mushrooms and things mm-hmm. that are happier with lower light right there is yep. perfect. Exactly, right? And that's one of the things you got to plan for. Um, now, another interesting one is, too, with, like, a peninsula tank, like mine, it's, I had to escape it in a way that looked good from both sides. Like, majority of tanks, it just has to look good from one side, so making it look good from both sides was definitely more of a challenge, because you're back and forth, oh, this looks cool here, but looks crappy there, and it's a lot of tweaking. Well, that's why I have a peninsula, too. That's why I had, I went for, like, a, a um figure eight look because Mm -hmm. there was sand bed open on both sides, but opposite sides. And so it was almost like a mirror image of each other. So that's something that I enjoyed. Yeah. Which is fun. Now the, what I, one thing I like about the peninsula is it's almost like you have two tanks in one because you can almost like escape one side of the coral. Almost. Because you also got that long look. Yeah. Like, so it's the left, the right, and that long distance. Cause I actually Mm -hmm. like, looked at that a lot too and you I love can look that. straight down the center of mine and i love that yeah i love that too i think that's one of the super cool view now when i escaped mine two, two considerations that i took into it one of it it was the flow because i really really did not want to put pumps on the far side unless i absolutely had to so i partially planned kind of like my acros on my stuff more high up at the front where the flow is heavy and i went to more like lower flow corals like torches and zoas and stuff at the far end of the tank yeah now the other consideration is i also tiered it upwards a little bit towards the overflow so that the higher flow was also the higher par spots of the tank where the far end where the lps and zoas and acads that wanted lower light and lower flow they kind of had that and then also you can look at the peninsula end and you can as it kind of tears up it gives you more depth to the tank so there's all these little, little kind of considerations f- that you have to think of on top of when you're doing a peninsula cell tank <laughs> <laughs> sorry i can't imagine <laughs> i just put all my money on the rock <laughs> thanks so oh, thanks so appreciate it buddy you're gonna so have to send us photos things- later <laughs> <laughs> um one of the things that I did because of um, Ryan's tank, actually. He he did the max spec on the end of the peninsula on the very corner. And I added mine there. And so I have flow on all the ends now. But the max spec, because it's so much more wider than the MP40s, which is what Mm -hmm. I did on the other side, it gives like a nice like current flow. So I I actually really like that. Yeah. If I did a light bar like this... I would probably have a pump like just underneath, like maybe a gyre or something. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. To shoot across, like that's if I had that type of light bar, I'd pull tank. But since my light bar is floating, I'm like, nope, can't have anything. Yeah, there. mine is too. Yeah. Yeah, I actually just ordered a um, extension cord for my max spec because right now I have it like just going across the top of the tank, mm-hmm. and so the extension, what I'm planning on doing is coming down the corner on the glass where like you, where it's like black anyway and then going around the down the bottom so that way you can't see the cord yeah see now okay this is not aquascaping directly well actually (laughs) can be um be hiding cords is a big thing for me like i don't care if they're in the stand but like the aesthetic view overall the tank it makes me happy to hide them all now Mm -hmm. part of your aquascape could be hiding gear that's a consideration yeah. Like you, you could strategically place stuff, you know, to maybe hide cords or, you know, power heads or other gear in the tank. Like if you don't have a sump, for instance, if you have just like a standard issue tank and you're, you know, you have a heater and some other gear inside your tank, you know, you could partially plan your aquascaping to camouflage it. And that there's, goes a well, long way. There's rocks that are made that have like the holes for pumps and like, like slots in the back to put heaters in, like. Which I mm-hmm. think is really cool. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. There's rocks with heater slots. Well, so not to beat a dead horse, but that's, <laughs> I was playing with all the all the aqua rocher yeah. at um, 
wrap Orlando, right? And there, mm-hmm. one of their pieces is like this triangle shape, and you can put a heater down in yeah. it. And that's there's cool. also like holes so that way you can put a pump and I'm like, ah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The t- Toonsies, I've seen they have their little rock that you can put a power head in, which I yeah, thought was kind of cool. Yeah, that. Yep. Now, I've never actually tried this, but I thought about it many times, is trying to take a Vortec and put it on the bottom of the tank and then build like a little like fake rock to like shoot the water out. Now, I, you'd have to like build some kind of brim and make sure it can't suck in sand and everything. Yeah. But I've had all these crazy ideas of trying to like future peninsula flow experiments. Yeah, that'd be but, really cool. Yeah. So if anyone's really motivated, that's a good idea to play with. I think it'll be awesome yeah. if it happens one day. That'd be hard though, like not I sucking know. in any sand. Yeah, you need like a tray, like a fake rock tray to sit in with like a lip and then it'd yeah. have to suck water a bit higher than shoot it back up. You'd, like I have like <laughs> I haven't thought about it. <laughs> oh, I put a lot of thought into this. I have like a, a couple rough ideas in my Head. The Toonsy rocks are made by Ocker Rocher. Huh. What do you know? There you go. Oh. So I will say they definitely have some because <laughs> I've seen them <laughs> rebranded. But yeah, no, it, it's it's a cool idea to ha- be able to hide power heads and rocks and stuff, right? Because that's a really cool way to add more flow without adding visual clutter to the tank. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I, I kind of half wonder, like, if you took that rock and covered in Zoas and stuff, like, how that would look and how they would fare on the side of like your jet nozzle coming out. But yeah, that would be kind of cool. You'd probably want to do something like a Monty. Yeah. Like a, an encrusting Monty or something. As something your flow just gets pushed into a sheet at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you've grown some weird arch or something yeah, around it. That'd be, it'd be really cool. If, now, okay, okay. So flow can with, with acros at least it can impact the shape of the acros with the flow like some will grow into the flow some grow away from the flow so like some colonies it's funny you can see them growing like one slade kind of angle up so on top of your aquascaping you could use coral to scape but, but this is more long-term planning and if it's your first reef tank it's obviously harder to do but once you've had a few tanks, you have a good idea of the grow patterns and stuff. You can kind of use that to your advantage to build out more structures over time as it grows, which can be kind of fun. But that's like a very slow, long-term bonsai aquascaping kind of method. Yeah. I. Yeah. None of my colonies are big enough yet to, to actually use yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a Fabia that's probably this big now that I got. Yeah. It was like this big when I got it. And it's like, it it's getting really big, um, but yeah, I that long term goal with the colonies can be feel like it's it's never coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> it will come eventually. Like <laughs> I didn't think so either, but now it's starting to get some big things, right? Like, but I mean, it's also a good two years now since I started the tank. Maybe yeah. a bit more. I don't even know. I got to figure this out later. I'm curious. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, knowing where you want to go, knowing how it can look good right now, mm-hmm. um, your skills are going to improve. So you're probably going to want to do more coral or different kinds of coral as you go on. Um, so you, I don't know how people don't change Aquascape, to be honest. Well, I don't very much. Like, my water box, that's base more 95% of what it originally was. But I'll, like, move corals and certain things around within it, or I'll tweak it slightly, but I haven't done any, like, major overhauls. But that's because that's encrusted now, and I don't want to move it or lose <laughs> it, right? So, now that, now, that being said, that's, like, a big advantage for the more modular-style rocks, because something's encrusted, you want to move it, you're like, oh, let me plunk out the shelf and put in a new one. Yeah. And you could, you know, move it somewhere else or break off that branch later and do it. But it's an easy way to change stuff. So there's like a big advantage now for the, you know, the pin system or like the interlocking rocks where it's more plug and play. Yeah, I I am a big fan of that. Um, mm-hmm. And I like I like a lot of Sephestrias and Favias yep. and Favides. And it's all these things that like <laughs> to encrust onto the coral or onto the rocks. Right. So mm-hmm. it makes it very hard to move them. No, it's true. You got you got to be. If your rock is cemented together, you got to be more cautious on where you put certain things. Um, 
Neptune dose and Pima pushes it wherever I please. Oh yeah, quick carrying water. It it is nice to automate moving water and not carrying buckets around. Yeah, I still manage to get water everywhere, but I have a I have a pump in my garage with my water station, and yeah, it moves the water for me. But I still there's water everywhere every single time. It happens. Yep. He just says drips from putting the hand in and fixing the coral that's falling over or something like that. Or the fish splashing. Yeah. My my blonde naso, if I'm not giving him enough attention, he will splash water at me. Oh, mine do that if they're hungry. <laughs> well, I'll walk by. I can just feed him, and if I'm not looking at him, he splashes at me. So oh, it's the, really cute. My, the trigger fish used to like split water at me when I walked by, and the, the hippo tang, if it's hungry, it'll be a big splash. I'm like, I just cleaned the glass. It's like <laughs> drips all on the sides. Like, dang. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um,. I don't know what else to say about aquascaping. Well, I think we cover most of the basics. I mean, making sure you have like a proper habitat is definitely a big one, right? Um, make sure, you know, every fish has a little a cave or little holes to dart into. It's going to make them feel comfortable. It's going to reduce aggression in your tank, which goes a long way. Um, obviously, you want to make it look cool because you're looking at the tank and especially for the first year until corals start to grow in, right? So you want it to look cool. I would also not make it more than about half of your tank's water height. Um, just because if you're in a Zoas, I mean, have at her. They're only that high anyways, right? It doesn't matter <laughs> if they're stretched out. But if you are into acros and stuff, you know, like some of mine are like that tall now, like of branches up from the rock. So you need to leave them space to grow into. And that's going to change your scape over time as well. Um, what it's about moving? Yeah. What about moving? Okay. Oh, yeah. So we'll go back to that question in a second. Um, flow wise, you want to consider where your flow is going to hit, you know, what type of coral you want. If you're acros and stuff closer to the flow, you know, if you want like softies, LPS, flowy, they want to be hard, further away from the flow, right? They want flow, but they want to be hammered. So a lot of those considerations. Uh, just Nano's Reef, what about moving an aquascape? That's a tricky one, to be honest, um, especially if it's encrusted full of stuff. Um, I would say likely, you know, take it off in chunks or a couple pieces if you can. Have, you know, one of those big Tupperware containers full of water to move it in. Obviously you want to get a friend because it's going to be heavy and wieldy and hard to do. So I literally just try and take it on pieces and put it in big buckets of water to move it. But yeah, it would suck. I do I, have an idea for that potentially. Do tell. Um, doing the styrofoam um, coolers. Mm -hmm. They're kind of cheaper and numbering them. So that way, you know, which one goes where. So that way, when you get to wherever you're going, you can, put them back in the right order that they need to go in. Um, if they would fit in that, if the rocks would fit in that, that might be a good way to move the aquascape. If you want to keep it the same without um, mm -hmm. changing anything, that almost feel like it would be easier to just make a new one. <laughs> yeah. Take the coral off, mm -hmm. keep them separate, keep the rock and yeah. a bin. And I feel like that would almost be easier. I don't know what they use to do this, and this probably would not work on a wet scape, but on this, the Art Reef Rock ones, they um, they put a little color coding on it to know which pieces match up together, oh. which is interesting. Now, this is because it was like a pre-built scape, so it's like, okay, you match up red, green, blue to red, green, blue, and it's how you figure out how to rebuild it. Now, I have no idea how you would do that after the fact or what would actually mark it later, but there, it plausible you could do something to kind of like mark pieces to rebuild it if you wanted to rebuild the same scape again yeah yeah i've just found whenever whenever i moved from my 32 gallon cube to my 60 gallon cube which mm -hmm. was in the same room <laughs> yeah um i couldn't figure out the way that i had had the rocks on top of each other and like mm -hmm. trying to get them level and stuff it was just it was really difficult to even knowing, because I was picking them up out of the tank and putting them in the other tank, like knowing yep. the order that they were supposed to be in, it was very hard to to get it right. And I ended up like not getting it right at all. Yeah. Um, what? Didn't get the notification? You got to hit that little bell. YouTube's hardcore at the bell now. So I never say it, but hit the little hit bell. The bell. Makes the, the makes the YouTube algorithms happy. Um, so, okay, types of rocks and methods of gluing fish habitat balance. More habitat, the better, in my opinion. 
um, whatever looks cool but it gives lots of habitat is like the way to go as for gluing the rock for the most part i try and let stuff balance on its own i will try to for the most part let gravity do the work for me your bottom piece is obviously a nice flat solid piece if you can get the flat cut ones that makes it easier if they got point to smack the hammer or something break off those sharp pointy bits and give you a flat surface so that you have a stable foundation to start with now gluing it if you're getting crazy you got a couple different methods you got ones where you can drill the rock and put in like a little pin either acrylic or fiberglass rod or like au crochet or art reef rocks where they preview that for you or if you're doing it on your own um, a lot of people super glue rock which i don't know how super structurally it is i know for building stuff like your bones and stuff is probably good if you want it to be extra hardcore, you'd want to use something like a cement, like I know Emarco cement, or there's Aquaforce makes one, I think Nios makes one. There's a bunch of different companies that make them. But so you can cement it, not like super solves the rock. But the consideration is you don't want it to be too heavy. So if you glue some crazy aquascape, good luck picking up and getting into the tank, right? So you gotta yeah. be strategic. Like in the water box, I think I only glued maximum of two rocks at a time. And then I'd use those as like pieces of my aquascape that I'd rebuild and put back in together. That was a mistake I made with my last aquascape was the first piece was like really big and mm -hmm. unwieldy. And the second piece, I realized that wasn't going to work. And I had one piece laying on top of the other piece. And that way it balanced each other. Mm -hmm. um, something about the, the glue also that I like to do, Instaset. Like yeah, lots and lots of Insta set super glue, put it together and it's not going to last for forever, but it gives you time to make sure you like the way it looks. And then you can put the mortar around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So su super glue is your temporary base and then a bit of mortar or epoxy as your more long term. But Insta -set. Yeah. Like I had never heard of Insta set before. That was like mind blowing to me. Yeah, I thought it was the coolest. I still think it's the coolest ever. I went through a lot of boxes of or bottles yeah. of Insta set. It it is cool stuff. Now, the other thing is too is find just playing with rocks and finding stuff that fits nicely together. Because if you have something that kind of like interlocks together, then you might not even need to glue it, right? If you just find just keep playing with different corners and positions until you find something that locks them together. Until you end up with a fish that that is likes to hit them <laughs> which i had that's what i had i had an issue with that with my um in my 60 gallon tank i can't remember i think it was my yellow tang that would like hit them and they would yeah. like wiggle and i'm like <laughs> like you could see the rocks like that's sketchy and i'm like ah! <laughs> that's a little sketchy i'm Ooh, like i'm never not gluing rocks again yeah. and another one i saw actually was um yeah Glue mix with sand acts is the same. Yeah, I've seen people do that too with like just super glue and sand and makes kind of that, it makes it more structural glue in a way. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're doing that, that's a really good way to do more like filler pieces. So if you have two rocks like this and you got like a little nook here, is if you mix either a small chunk of rubble rock and glue it in or mixing it with like the sand and the glue and it makes more of a structural little like corner keystone -y type of piece to help take or brace it up more and that, that can help quite a bit. Uh, do, 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 do. I was just had another really good point before I got sidetracked there. It's um, it's gone. Well, with, with all these like little pieces, I think it's just mm -hmm. like engineering practices too, right? Like, mm -hmm. like when you, they build a foundation for a home, they, or a driveway or whatever it is that they built, they were building, they, they first fill it with, um, small gravel. And, um, even when they do the bricks the the, what are the bricks, I guess, cinder blocks, if you fill those with rocks in between, it makes a yep. wall more stable. So it's just a matter of like adding more substance and friction. Yep. The the smaller the pieces are, the more friction there's going to be and the less likely it's going to move. Nice. Um, Sammy, carob sea shapes makes pre-drill too. Ah, I didn't know that. Um, I forgot what shapes actually. I think I have some in my shed. So I've used shapes. <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty cool rock too. Like that was pretty quick and easy to bust out of scape with it. I'm surprised, but yeah, no, that that's a pretty solid one option as well. I did not know they're pre-drilled. Must be a new addition. Oh, another one. Uh, Robert, one of the guys, saw it. His was all Tonga branch, and he literally just like zap strapped them together. Hmm. 
So with the branches, <laughs> puts two together, puts a zap strap around it, and that was it. Because I'm looking at his tank, and like when it's all growing and you don't see it, but when we're like moving, I'm like, what's this weird line across your coral <laughs> encrusted? And it's like a zap strap underneath. You like cut the zap strap off, it's like all encrusted with stuff. And oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> um, how long? Hey, I was you... a PC gamer too. <laughs> for the record. Reefing and gaming will just like game one night. <laughs> I haven't yeah. played a computer game way too long. I should. Oh my god, I love it. It's a problem. Yep. How long does it take for Ganiapora to adjust to a new tank? Mine isn't really opening at all. So, Ganis, it might take a day or two for it to settle in. A big thing with Ganis, though, is they like to eat little particulate food. And if you, they have their particular food, they're generally happy. If you have one that's not opening, it's hard to feed, and that can be trouble because it will slowly deteriorate if it doesn't get food. Um, so sometimes you just buy one and it hasn't been opened, that can be an issue. But usually it might take a day or two for them to open up. I, I got... feel like Ghanis for me are either they do really well or they never open up. Yeah. <laughs> More pictures! Reefing and gaming for the win. Heck yeah. So <laughs> this that little green guy was more a to, one that the other direction. Yeah, now we can so, see it. The green yeah. guy. Yeah, so the green guy's a new little one and that one it took a day or it didn't open up on day one. I think day two or three it opened up and then whenever I feed the tank I make sure to dump it roughly in that little area. That way it gets some food as well and then it tends to be happier. Hi Pepe! Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can I use to cut rock to make thinner pieces? Would a bandsaw work? I have cut rock with a hacksaw. It will definitely work. It can be a bit. It depends on the type of rock. Um, the I just a chisel and hammer too. Yep. And just like looking at where it looks like the natural faults would be, and just banging it till it got the right thinness. Yeah. That that can work. Um, it's not very precise. <laughs> the best way to cut rock is with like a coral bandsaw, like a di oh, diamond bay, basically. So coral bandsaws are actually made for cutting glass, not corals, but that's what the actual use is, um, is the diamond bandsaw for that. Now there is, you can get diamond blades and just use them on like a little circular or something and cut stuff. That's what I did way back in the day. A store called Princess Auto, which is kind of like a cheaper tool store. You just go get a blade and just cut stuff <laughs> up with it, and it worked well. Or like tile saws. Like there, there's lots of ways you can do it. The only problem is if you want like a big flat thing on a rock, you need a pretty big blade, right? So you need something to cut it with. I tried cutting it on my miter saw once. That was a bad idea. It buggered up the slider, so I wouldn't advise that. It sucked to get that clean to Deborah get it back. Said in. taking it to a local granite countertop shop. Yeah, they would. I don't know if it'd be cheap, but they would. Um, something I've done also, this is not cutting, but yeah. I took, um, a bunch of small rocks and glued them together until I had the platform, <laughs> yeah. the size I wanted. Um, <laughs> and that seemed to work pretty well too. Nice. And That's it also slow. was really lightweight because there was a lot of like space in between. Good way to do it. Ooh, the, the one other thing we haven't mentioned, but I've used in the past is that like thermal putty stuff. It's like little little balls of plastic oh, yeah. that you put I've in hot those, water. I've never like had those. those yeah, they're, they're so cool. cool. I bought a, a couple of jars from Marine Depot back in the day. I don't know if anyone who sells them now. I think it was maybe it was Aquamax or, but um, you basically put it in like boiling water from the kettle and you can like mix them and squish them up and it's like pliable plastic. And as it cools, it hardens. So I've used that to make like feet for rocks, right? For if you want to get, you know, you want to like put something like this and you want it to stay there. You could build a foot for it out of uh, that stuff. So you can get some really cool stuff or this because you're talking about the shelf. I remember my buddy had the shelf and had a big hole in it. You want a coral there. So we built like a little dish that like fills that hole. Ah, so you put a coral in it, which would work pretty well. That's really smart. Yeah. There's all kinds of like unique ideas. Like, like I thought this was like the coolest idea that I came up with like ever. That is a cool idea. I like it. 
but it didn't serve its purpose. All the other fish used it, not the goby. Somebody used it, so yeah, they the liked it. was still digging holes after everything. You can't stop them. Like, I've had, oh. like, I remember I used to have a jawfish, and he had, like, six vacation homes. He's like, yeah. here's my main house, here's Sunday's home, here's, like, evenings. Like, he had little uh, caves everywhere, so I think that it's, like, the little network of safety. Yeah. I, I, I totally thought he would like the PVC pipes, but he was like, nope, peace out, lady. Um, I know, eh? Um, um da dum dum. Do you... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was Max Spec, but yeah, those, those little thermal plastic beads are super cool. Like, they're just like an easy way if you need to add structure to something. Or if it's already underwater and you want to add structure to it, then it's you know, warm it up, heat up, kind of get it pliable, poke it in and get it, like, push it into the cracks and let it fill those little nooks and crannies. That's going to give you a lot of structural support. Yeah. I I want to get my hands on that. That seems really cool. I will send you a link whenever I find something. Like I haven't Sweet. seen it in a while, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, Another, just while we're talking about the thermoplastic pro tip, I did this back in the day. I had a bubble tip anemone that was stinging out the corals and it's been a punk and I wanted to remove it. And of course I couldn't, like I literally, you know, you try and like annoy the foot, but it was like deep in this crack in a rock. I just could knock it out for the life of me. I even took the rock out and like tried to put it on a bucket for like a couple hours, nothing, refused to leave. So I took um, that thermal plastic I and I made like a- I not be moved. <laughs> exactly. He, he, he was, did not want to go. So I took a bunch of that thermal plastic and I made like a cone on top of it. So if he wanted to get to the light, he would have to like crawl out of his little hole. Ah. So I thought I was like super clever at first. And then he started, finally came out of the hole and I tried to break it off. And of course he retreated back into his hole. So he never fully left it. So then I put it back for a day. And a day or two later, I built a second cone on top of that cone. So he had to walk even further. And then that <laughs> finally worked. Once he finally climbed out of the, the like one that was like four or five inches further. <laughs> he finally climbed and I broke it off and then I had him in the little coney thing and I could relocate him after that. That's but awesome. that yeah, that was like the hardcore anemone eviction strategy. I think we talked about the the skimmer roller mat two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago we talked about that. Um yeah, it was basically like a filter roller to collect your skimmer gunk and roll it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, be interesting. I'm curious to know if it's really nasty smelling or not. So whoever tries one, let me know. <laughs> That'd be my fear. I didn't even think about that, but it, it probably doesn't smell great. You know what, though? I also thought the roller mat would smell, like, really bad. And I, you oh, barely really? even notice anything. Like, I'm surprised how it doesn't. So, Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it contains it. Just don't unroll it in your driveway on a hot so day. The roller okay. mat pulls it out before it starts to deteriorate. The True. skimmer's after it's already breaking down. Yeah, I don't know. Be interesting. I'm curious. So if anyone tries it, let me know. Yeah, I'd and, like to know. Yep. Put some carbon over it. <laughs> that's true um i'm getting tired <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fair <laughs> all right guys i think we're gonna call it for today because i think i we do want to say though covered. about the youtube stuff you way you are starting to do youtube videos finally you're expanding past instagram i'm proud of you yeah well i have some that i've done a while back but editing's really hard <laughs> the more you do it um, the easier it gets well, I have a bunch of stuff recorded that I never did anything with. So I'm actually working with Aquarium Partners, and they're going to be editing all the stuff and putting it on their channel, and I'll be doing all that stuff with them. Hey, so that's awesome. What's your yeah. channel? Aquarium Partners? Aquarium Partners. Francois awesome. was on it talking earlier. I don't know if he's still on right now. But, yeah, we have a video up, and hope we're, I'm hoping that we can get at least one up a week. So Nice. Make her happen. It'll be right good. now, though, I, I have a – we have – a lot of um, improvements to be made. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta um, start somewhere. Me remembering to turn the phone this way, right? Oh yeah. So no, it's not Instagram. It's horizontal for YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Instagram. Uh, YouTube. Instagram. Yep. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Richard aficionado. He was like, "You Instagrammers." And like. <laughs> I remember at one time being a show, it's like, I record a clip this way and I record another clip this way. So I have like flexibility in which content. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to start doing that. Like, cause it didn't even occur to me. Cause I, ma I made a bunch of the videos for Instagram and didn't redo them for the YouTube. So there's like vertical things. And this is going to be Brandy at the next show. All right, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> Cover the basis. Oh, yeah. 
Brilliant. I need a second phone. I love right. that. Strategy. Only way I'm going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Just dual, dual phones. Get her done. <laughs> Record at the same time. Yep. Strategy. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's you, awesome. Francois. Very excited. It's going to be, we're going to do some awesome stuff. So. Excellent. Love it. Brandy has the cutest co-host also. Ooh, he is really cute, isn't he? <laughs> Your little guy. You're my, you're my co. Oh, my! I thought he was talking about you. I don't know. 50, <laughs> 50. I'm assuming it's your kid though. He's probably. Uh, that probably than makes me. more sense. <laughs> <laughs> my my son is very cute. He loves yeah. jumping in, and um, he doesn't really like the tank, but he likes recording stuff for the tank. So. <laughs> <laughs> And put him into work yeah if he wants to hang out with me while we're recording stuff then i'm all for that well if you teach him to edit you're pretty much set i know like right i'm like <laughs> I've, I've actually looked up i was like is there like editing software that kids can use <laughs> like um I, I did find something but it wasn't very useful it was an adobe program i forget what it was but yeah editing is hard really hard and i it's so impressive what all you do dev it's it's a lot of work the more you do it, the easier it gets. Well, after you edit hundreds of videos, it's not too bad. It's still time consuming, but it's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even just the rendering, <laughs> like, like. Yeah. Met your son. <laughs> Devin, your is son. Cute too. Devin is cute too. Thank you. You're very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I'm very good. Son. I don't know why, Dev. I went directly to, to I, was, I was like, oh, you're my co-host now, Dev. <laughs> yep. I was like, I just got promoted. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> uh, that's fun all right so if you haven't checked out aquarium partners brandy's new secondary side channel she'll be on so definitely check that out um thank you guys for coming out today thank you brandy aka be the fountain for joining me today it's always fun when we're talking always have thank good you chats for having me um don't really stay on topic but that's okay that's yeah, part of the fun as long as it's like half on topic it's fine um bruno goldslinger reefing with though thank you guys for the super chats much appreciated Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Of course. Thanks yep. for watching the stream. Oh, no.